Hello and welcome to Rolling With Reviews. I'm Will and with me as always is the one who believes in pumpkin chunkin. <laughs> Sarah. And today we're doing a review of Harvest, the Golden Edition. Now this is different than the Harvest released by Tasty Mistral Games. This one's by Keymaster Games. Uh, so, and, and the Golden Edition is the special deluxe Kickstarter version of this game, which is different than its retail release by Keymaster Games. Right. Now, if you're curious about our two-player perspective and accessibility, check out our other video, Rolling With Two, Harvest. Sarah, tell us a bit about this game. All right. In Harvest, you take on the role of a unique farmer with a unique farmhouse. Each round, you'll draft sunrise cards that give you income and turn order. In turn order, players will place their workers around town to do various actions to manage their farms. By the end of the harvest season, the farmer with the most points wins. All right, Will, so why did we get this? So we knew about the previous game. Yeah. The uh, previous from version Tasty Minstrel. Of it, yeah. they, uh, the original. Same designer, mm -hmm. same game essentially. But we did hear that the two player game experience wasn't that great. For the original, for yes. For the original. So when Keymaster came out with the uh, Kickstarter for mm -hmm. the basically republishing of this, yeah. one of the major refinements they did was for the two player. And mm -hmm. they refined a few other things, but they said that a hundred times better it was going to be for two right. players. So that's why we backed the Kickstarter. Yes. And so that's why we have it. Okay, so what do we like about the game? Well, we absolutely love the deluxe uh, yeah. application of this whole thing, N especially not, the golden edition. Right, this golden edition is not only just nice because it has deluxe features, it is more accessible because it has dual layer boards, uniquely shaped uh, wooden pieces. Um, metal coins are a kind of give or take on- It just feels nice. They're yeah. nicer, but they're not, you know, on the accessibility mm -hmm. thing. I think for me, I was just really disappointed that the retail doesn't have the dual layer boards. That's yeah. just kind of it. We also like that it plays fast. Yes, it plays very quickly. I mean, especially at the two player, but it just, it goes back and forth. I mean, you only have three? Yes. Three workers. So it's not a race to get more workers. You you will always only have three workers. In a round. In a round. And, and I think there's five rounds? Yes, I yes, think there's five, five rounds. rounds. So you have only so many actions to improve your farm and make some points and see if you can win the game. Yeah, another thing I absolutely love is each location that you put a worker on has uh, dynamic choices. Right. So for example, if you go to the general store, well, you can take three actions there, that's the top one, and you have a list of variety, or you take two actions there, more in case someone take in the third one, or you take one, but you also get money. Right. And, and each space is like that with a little bit of give and take so that the last person there isn't necessarily the absolute worst possible right. thing. And there's times where certain spaces will cost you money, and if you don't have that, well, then you can't go there, but then you can go somewhere else in that area. Right. So it's nice that it's not always that this is the best spot, you know, kind of thing, because it is worker placement, so there is blocking. Um, there are a few spots that are infinite, so that's nice, too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it's not just the first come is always the best one. And if you are the first, you still may not pick the so-called best one, because it might not be... What if you only need one action mm -hmm. at the, you know, the general store, but you need that money? Yeah, or you can't afford. Yeah, or you can't the, afford to really buy anything, but you can get something free or whatever. Yes. So, and you like that, and I like it too, that it really feels like you're running a farm. Other yes. farming games, they're, sometimes it can be a bit too abstracted in what you're doing. Or the scope of it is it's a little too large, broad. Yeah. It's like, well... I really didn't do any sort of farming. I actually did some ranching. Right. No, I did some artisanal uh, crafting of these I things. built buildings. Yeah. <laughs> so what makes you a farmer and right. not an architect? Or yeah. a, a carpenter or a craftsperson? Right. This game is definitely focused on uh, you need to clear your land, you need to put crops out there, you need to water them, and you need to harvest them. Harvest. It's, it's in the name. It's in the name. Um, the other thing that's really neat is you start off with really simple asymmetric powers in your farmer and your farmhouse. And there's two separate things. And so you get a lot of variability on how your games are going to go. I mean, they're minor, but they're big enough to impact things. Right. 
Um, I think that's everything we really like about the game. So what we don't like is this could be a sticking point for some people. It was a little difficult for me because this is called Harvest. Harvesting is where all the points are at. <laughs> yeah, we've run across a number of games where so I was like, well, I wanted to do other things, yeah. but I have to do this thing. And I pointed to the title. I was like, well, what's on the box? And she goes, Harvest. It's like, well, yeah. isn't that kind of what you should be doing? She goes, yeah. yeah so I you guess. might like building buildings or clearing your land or something to that effect, but no, you, you definitely need to harvest crops. You've got to figure out a way to do it that's different because that's the hard part. It's still a worker placement and you've still got blocking spaces. So if you're trying to do something the exact same way as somebody else, if they get to it before you, you just, you can't. You can't right. do it exactly the same. But that's where it comes in utilizing your character special ability, right. your farmhouse ability, buying buildings that could give you more options, right. or going to the farmer's market where it's like essentially once in a game, as long as you can afford it, those are pretty special, unique uh, yeah, uh, uh, actions. Right, because you can usually, you have to pay a bit more, mm -hmm. but you usually get multiple things in one go, whereas other places you can only get like one thing right. type of thing. So it's just one of the things you need to note. This is not a point salad type of game. It's about crops. So, so you can make that salad. Yes, that's true. And point at it. And then the only other thing that we really don't like, which we kind of already talked about, is the retail version is the least accessible version. It's not that it's terrible, it's just uh, it, it might have some issues for some players. Yeah, well, like for example, uh, there are tracks to track manure and water. And in this particular version, since they're dual layer tracks, and the pieces are all shaped, I can actually operate it on my own. I don't need Sarah reaching right. over and it's like, well, let's make sure that you get this this way, which would have been the case if we had the retail version. Correct. I just, it's one of those things that I really don't like it when companies put dual layer boards as a Kickstarter exclusive, deluxe exclusive version because it's just, it's not just nice, it's accessible. Yeah. All right, so who is this for? I'd say it's family weight if your family are gamers. Yeah. Because uh, there is a, a number of complexities in here that uh, gamers will find very comfortable, very easy to understand, but might confuse a brand new family. It was like, well, wait, what is yeah. it? This is not Monopoly. <laughs> no, this is definitely going to be for your advanced gamers. But like Will said, if you're a family of gamers, I think you're going to get it. But otherwise, advanced gamers and up yeah. for this kind of game. And the higher level gamers, this will probably end up being a filler game despite the box size yeah. uh, because of how quick it actually will play. So for family weight and maybe intermediate, it would be a main I'm course. I'm not sure it'd be filler, but it's shorter. It's on the shorter side. It's definitely I've, not seen a, I've seen how some people play in what they normally play. This yeah, is definitely filler for them. But sometimes we'll to see filler as time-wise, because this is still not going to be a 15-minute game. Uh, this well, is you, still you, a 30 to 40-minute game. If you know what you're doing. I mean, you you plan out your yeah. thing. I guess more. it really depends on how you go about it. Um, as to whether you would consider this a filler game or not. It is not going to be your biggest, heaviest, longest game, but it is still going to somewhere be between 30 minutes and an hour yeah. to play. Yeah. All right, our ratings. So for our ratings, we each have 1d6 worth of ratings to give. One is low, six is high. We give a number, a reason why, add them up and see what it rolls for us. Sarah, what did Harvest, the gold edition, roll for you? It rolled a three. And I think it's because I'm still just not a huge fan of bots. Um, Gary's not bad. Um, just not, I don't know, still just don't really like it. And I just, it's hard to vary your strategies on how you do the crops. And I just, for me, couldn't figure out how to do things differently than you. And so it always felt like I was two to three steps behind whatever it was you were doing. I wanted there to be a little bit more variety in how you can earn points in this game um, because it is a worker placement blocking game. You um, want point salad. A, a bit more. I just wanted something to open up. It felt very narrow. And so I felt like I was always behind you or blocked by Gary 
And again, it's just one of those things. In a two-player game, I only want you as my opponent. I'd rather there just be setup that changes the openness of the action spaces, but not someone, a bot, randomly blocking things to make it so that I can't. Because then it's just random. I don't like it. I, okay. Anyways, but I will say I do like this deluxe version, so I definitely highly recommend if this is a game that sounds interesting to you and you don't have my hangups, just make sure you can get a golden edition and you'll have the best edition. Yeah, this is probably one of the games that we uh, differ the most on. I give it a six. Yeah. This game is fantastic. Um, I like the fact that it is a farming game that's focused on farming. I like the narrow focus because a lot of games that claim to be farming are sometimes anything but. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, I might have grown a carrot once because I needed to feed something, uh, but I didn't really farm and I still won. Like, well, then you didn't really play a farming game. You just played a, a hobby gardener <laughs> who just happened to live on a big plot of land that you didn't utilize for farming. But hey, nice windmill. Um, so I like the, the narrow focus. I like the snappy uh, gameplay. The fact that it doesn't also belabor the point of farming so that it takes forever. Um, and of course the gold edition helps just with the whole production of everything feeling fancy for me. So, fantastic game. Sarah has no idea how to beat me, and I think that's her biggest problem. Probably. So, 9 out of 12, spectacular st score, despite the fact Sarah doesn't know how to rate games. <laughs> As Will always tends to joke with me is, I don't really like games. Yeah, yeah, yeah she doesn't like games. <laughs> she doesn't like games. All right, and that'll do it for us. And Sarah, yeah. based on the art style, do you think anybody will compare this to something like Everdell? I mean, it's possible. I have to admit, I wasn't really sure about the... Um, Anthropomorphic. Thank you, yes. The animal people. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine. Um, I have no problems with it. Um, and yeah, it's possible. I, I think it's just a way to... A lot of people to, I guess they want to make diversity. I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. Diversity without having to deal with people. The, yeah, the political aspects <laughs> of it. Right. This could actually almost be a spinoff of Everdale, honestly. Yeah, honestly, it's like, well, it could. This is, these are some of the farmers that live in Everdale, so let's go see what they're doing on their farm. <gasps> they're farming. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Whereas Sarah is like, I'm a lumberjack. I'm like, no, you're not a lumberjack. If you were a lumberjack, you'd be in Everdale. But I'm a lumberjack. I guess so, because I was really good at clearing my farm out. Yeah, you were very, very, very good at that. <laughs> All right. All right. And we've been Rolling, Rolling with, with reviews. reviews. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to us on the various social media platforms at Rolling with Two. That's T W O. We're on Blue Sky, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Discord, we have a channel on Tabletop Express. Check the show notes for the invite link. If you have time, check out the other content Nanaman has found for you. Because remember, he's rolling with you.